And the second block is being skinny made me get into fights. Yeah. Made you. Now you know. (laughs) (laughs) Made you. Forced to fight. Yes. Yes. Mate, wow. It, I think it goes back to uh, what we talked about of righting wrongs. Like almost every fight I've ever gotten into was because I saw somebody do something to somebody else, mm-hmm. bully somebody else, and it made me fucking crazy. And I think I felt insignificant. I felt not manly. I was a very skinny kid. I'm still skinny, but I was a really skinny kid, short, and uh, and I felt in fear and, be, and my father made me feel small. I mean, when when you got a guy who's that powerful yelling in your face, yeah. never mind the hitting, just yelling yeah. and and making you feel small and intimidated, that fucks with your psyche. That fucks with the way you carry yourself when you walk down the street. Yeah. So I think I was always overcompensating for that. And I would always fight somebody if I felt slighted, if I felt like they didn't think I was tough. Yeah. Then I had to show them that I was. You had no choice. I had no choice. <laughs> I mean, that's how, if you're not Irish, I don't know why you're still listening to this. No, but if, <laughs> if you're not Irish, at a certain point, you can't, there are things that you, I've done things in physical altercations that surprised me. Yeah. Where I was like, oh, I'm not backing down. Mm-hmm. And my, even the layer after that's not backing down. Like everything it does feel like generations of you or iterations of me are like, no, I'm going to stand up to this and I'm not going to, you know, I Compromise. can't. Yeah, like I can't. I can't. And that's ultimately what people respond to because a lot of times they then don't fight you. You know, like if they feel with absolute that you are concrete, that you are not moving. Yeah. They just, it doesn't matter how big you are. They still go like, well, I, I don't it's want- It's Dom Irera's joke about like, it's never over. Nobody wanted to fight more than the Irish guys. The Irish guys would fight at the drop of a hat. They were incredulous. You want to fight me, man? But I'll tell you what, man, you better fucking kill me, man, because I'm mental and I never forget. You understand? Right, right. I'll be a, I'll just be like a finger <laughs> and I'll fight. <laughs> I'll find you and poke you in the yeah, eye. Like right. it does, it's never over. You're right. Now, the downside is, grudges and i don't even know if that's one of your one of your uh one of your blocks but it's one of mine yeah (laughs) and it's directly connected what's your oldest grudge i mean i didn't talk to my dad for most of my adult life so like i didn't really talk i talked to him i moved out when i was 18 talked to him i remember he called when me and Chappelle were doing the last like be right the day we were turning in half baked mm-hmm. i hadn't talked to him in four or five years and yeah. i got off the phone i go you're not gonna believe who that was and it was like fuck and then i talked to him i would talk to him when th- when i was doing well he'd be he'd interested. Call you. yeah wow. and it's all the hacky shit where like he died and it's like did you know he'd brag about yeah, you yeah yeah and he had a copy of half baked and it was all like right. And but but then he told me he wasn't proud to see my name on the move. You know what I mean? Yeah, Just like, yeah. what is this? So I don't think I missed anything. I don't think I missed. I mean, I you want a paternal relationship, but like if they're not good at it, there's no point, right? And if they yeah. don't want to do it, there's no point. Yeah, I'm not gonna put myself in harm's way. But you, but I have grudges. I don't speak to people for years, and I don't mm. speak to numerous people do you then reconnect you reunite ever or is it once you're, I, things once you're will in? things will cool i i had santino in the icebox for a couple of years uh-huh. <laughs> we cooled it <laughs> we, we figured it out i mean i put some people in the icebox yeah. and we talked about it, we did a podcast about like we we did a full scale healing podcast uh it was you know dave i've not spoken to for you there's people that like they Marin, I ne- that was never that was more just like you can just be openly hostile with Marin. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, there's people that I've just been like, I can't speak to you. Right. Why not? I because it's pointless. Yeah. Um. But yeah. But then you come back and uh. uh but so I'm curious as to, do you have? You're pretty pugnacious, like professionally, and you said the I, I if I can before you answer you said the 
one of the wisest things I've ever heard about show business, which is you can do anything except lose your temper. Right. right. Which I'm very guilty of losing yeah, my temper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've I've lost my temper and it's cost me. It's like really fucking cost me a few times. Um no, I get it out though. I don't hold grudges a lot because I generally in the moment will say something to people. Um, I try to do it in a more controlled way. I hold so many grudges. If somebody has one against me, I'm like, gotta take it. Yeah. Got I understand. I've been there. I wish you I wish you luck. Yeah. <laughs> I hope it's satisfied. It's it's the first time in my life recently where I've been able to understand the thing of I, that I heard in an Alanon meeting, which is if you holding grudges like uh like shitting your own pants and hoping the other person has to run to the bathroom or yeah, whatever yeah and, but i'm like but i would think like yeah but if i shit my pants they're gonna smell it <laughs> and that'll be uncomfortable <laughs> and now i realize that it's we are to feel bad about a person or be negative or be caustic is make they don't experience it it's just in your own you're just cooking it up for yourself to drink. Right. It's it, it's poison. It's drinking poison and hoping right. the other person dies. It's right. like the better Elanon version. But I never understood that. Yeah. It was worth the the stench to me to because of that righteousness thing of like, you don't you see? Don't you see what you're doing to me? Yeah. It's like you're doing it entirely on your own. Yeah. And did you get your ass whipped a lot in the fights? Or was it like you you were able to fight beyond your weight class? I fought way beyond my weight class. I was very fast. And I think the amount of anger that I was sitting on, that I still sit on, manifest in really becoming like a superpower. Yeah, I believe that. I could grab people. I could throw them down. I think me and my brother fought nonstop yeah. my entire life. It was like training for yeah, this. Yeah, no, I, I feel like I've fought, I have five older brothers. I feel like I'm like not, I, I could wrestle decently. Right. And tussle decently. Yeah. I don't, but like, I feel like if if push came to shove, what's funny is like I'm a little adrenalized talking about this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm a little bit like. <laughs> you want to go? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I. It, so you would you would surprise people. Yeah, and I think the other thing about fights is whoever throws the first punch wins the fight eighty five percent of the time. Yeah. Because often the fight gets broken up. Yes. So you know if you can get in a couple of shots, you the the fight's going to end probably within five seconds. Yeah. So I think there was a lot of those. I got arrested when I was about 16 for uh, me and my buddy, Brian. We, we, we took uh, Taekwondo. And so we were we were in a bar and this older guy, we were 16 and this guy was probably in his late 20s. His and was, this wasn't uncommon to be 16 year old in the bar in the, no, early, in the early 80s. No, nope. not, especially yes. not when the bartender was a gay Irish Joe who used sure. to buy us free drafts and shots of Jameson's. And then at the end of the night, he would always go, uh, uh, you boys are too drunk to be walking home. You'll come up and stay in my apartment upstairs. <laughs> and you'd make love to him all night. Sweet, slow love. And so uh, Joe sees us getting into a beef with this guy, Eddie Flacco. And he throws out Eddie Flacco and he buys us another drink. So now it's like three o'clock in the morning and me and Brian walk outside and Eddie's waiting for us. And he pulls out a switch. Not Shit faced or like, like alert at this point? Um, he was a street kid. He was like a real urchin. So, so he was 20? He was like probably 25. Okay. All He'd right. He'd probably been in jail. And he pulls out a switch, uh, not a blade, a comb, you know, where you it pops yeah. out like a, and he uh -huh. pulls that on us. Okay. So we pull some Taekwondo on him and we're, we throw him on a, on a car and we're, beating on him and he's beating on us and we don't realize the police station is next door <laughs> to the r and r lounge and so the cops come out they don't even have to get in a car like there's a camera yeah and they just come out and arrest us and they, <laughs> and they put us in jail right and uh so it was a lot of like uh, and i'm assuming nothing happened to the bar no licenses no, were revoked no, no that would leave the bar out of this isn't that amazing yeah that's how it was yeah you would get a warning yep. for DUIs. A warning. A warning. Maybe. I, I remember being told to drive home once. Just go straight home. 
Okay. Okay. I was going to go pick some stuff up, but if you're telling me, I was going to run errands, yeah. but if you're telling me I should right. go, you're right. No, right. you're right, right, sir. But this is dozens of fights you Oh, yeah. Into? I got arrested in Rhode Island for uh, fighting. It was me and my brother and this guy, Sean Burgoyne, who's an Irishman from Belfast. Mm-hmm. And uh, we were drunk and some local kids were fucking with us. And I just, I some kid out on the Yankees hat. I go, you're not from New York. And I punched him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> so we all get arrested. Well, me, I get arrested. And then, so there was me, my brother, and Sean, and there was about four or five of them. So they arrest me and the one black kid from the other group who was not in the fight at all. So funny. And so we were in jail cells next to each other. And I go, and we're talking to each other. And I was like, hey, sorry, man. I know you had nothing to do with this. And he was a nice kid. And so uh, we exchanged numbers. He got life in prison for the fight. I don't oh, know no, if you heard. Better than that. We get called to court. We spend the weekend in jail and then we get called to court and I, I live in, I'm going to BU at this point and the fight was down in uh, Newport, Rhode Island. Mm-hmm. So I had to go down there to court and uh, my friend's father was a DA in Rhode Island. So he talked to the judge and I went up in front of the judge and uh, fucking wink and I, you're all set. And then um, and I talked to my friend about this kid and the kid got the same treatment and the judge let us Great. both off. Great. Yeah. An ally, ladies and gentlemen. That's it. In the 80s. Yeah. He's been an ally. And and have and that hat how did you undo it? How did you undo the urge? I haven't. I still have it. I I don't, you know, I don't fight anymore. I I can't remember the last time I got in a fight. Playing ice hockey was a good outlet because you know, you had safe safe fights. You know, we Well, had yeah. Fucking face masks on and gloves. You tear it up yeah I, I had one of those fights probably seven or eight years ago playing ice hockey um but for the most part i don't i still want to i really when you f- see 45 year olds fighting what do you think <laughs> 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 i'm proud of them are you i mean the best are are like part golf of me that- course Golf course fights are the funniest. That's yeah. on my Instagram feed. They know I like those. A birdie that turned into a brawl. I almost fought John Benjamin on a golf course when I was in my 20s. No shit. Yeah, like I'll fight people. I don't. Yeah. Matt Walsh was there. He can corroborate. Uh-huh. Sam yeah. Cedar. Yeah. I was ready to fight. Yeah. At a, at a certain. Now I just don't. But I'm like, I didn't have a plan. I was just like, all I know is you cannot speak to me like this anymore. Yeah. Right. So I don't know what else to do. Right. What you won't seem to you don't seem to be stopping. Yeah. So I guess we have to fight. I don't know what else. Like logically, I guess it's not the most sensible thing. In fact, I know it's not. If somebody says something negative about you and you threaten to fight them over it, do you think you change their mind about their negative belief? I don't think I care about their belief. I care about them disrespecting me. Right. So I think I can change that. Yeah. I remember Marin one time was shitting on me at the Luna Lounge in New York and I went after him and Louis C.K. broke up the fight. It wasn't a fight. Marin, I don't think Marin was going to fight. But uh, yeah, I can't I can't be disrespected like that. Yeah, I'm the same way. Yeah. Like you, you wouldn't believe how recently. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> you wouldn't believe it. Nice. <laughs> um, Hey, did you like that? Did you like that? Yeah, did you like it though? You want more? Don't want to work? Would rather watch videos of me grab assing with people? First of all, go up here to subscribe and then go up here to uh, watch more clips. This is like when the weatherman says that there's a high pressure system coming in. I'm I'm not really used to the green screen.